Hello friends, today I came with a very interesting topic. Have you ever wondered as why India drives on the left side of the road and the US and the European countries drive on the right side? We will try to find the reason or logic behind this divide in this presentation. It is believed that about a quarter of the world drives on the left and these countries are those that are mostly old British colonies. Now this might look strange to the rest of the world but there is a perfectly good reason and as of today about 165 countries follow right hand traffic while 75 countries follow left hand traffic. Now almost 10% population in the world is left-handed and maximum is in the Netherlands and minimum is in the Korea, 2%. In India, there are around 5.2% people who are left-handed and therefore you can say the majority of the people are right-handed. In the past, almost everybody traveled on the left side of the road because that was the most sensible option for feudal violent societies. Now since most people are right-handed, swordsmen preferred to keep the left in order to have their right arm nearer to the opponent and their scabbard further from him. Also, for a right-handed person, it is easy to mount a horse from the left side. And it would be very difficult to do otherwise if wearing a SWAT. Now, it is safer to mount and dismount towards the side of the road rather than in the middle of the traffic. So if one mounts on the left, then the horse should be ridden on the left side of the road. And that is how this started. Moving on the left side of the road. In late 1700s, the Timisters in France and in United States began hauling farm products. And these were transported in long wagons. And these wagons were pulled by several horses. These wagons had no driver's seat. And therefore, the driver sat on the left rear horse so that he could keep his right arm free to lash the team. Now, since he was sitting on the left, he naturally wanted everybody to pass on the left so that he can keep clear of the ongoing wagon's wheels. Therefore, he kept to the right side of the road. And that is how the moving on the right side of the road started in US and in Europe. Now, after the French Revolution, it gave a huge impetus to right-handed travel in Europe. And the, the fact is that before the revolution, the aristocracy traveled on the left side of the road and the common man over to the right. But after the storming of the Basile and the subsequent events, aristocrats preferred to keep a low profile and they also joined the pigeons on the right. An official keep right rule was introduced in Paris in 1794, more or less parallel to the Denmark where driving on right side had been compulsory in 1793. Later, Napoleon's victories spread the new rightism to the low countries like Belgium, the Netherlands, and Luxembourg. Switzerland, Germany, Poland, Russia, and many parts of Spain and Italy. The states that had registered Napoleon kept left, like Britain, the Austro-Hungarian Empire, and Portugal. This European division between the left and right hand nations continued for more than 100 years until the First World War. After the Russia-Sweden War, 
Sweden ceded Finland to right driving Russia in 1809, but Swedish law, including traffic regulations, remained valid in Finland for another 50 years. After Imperial Russian decree in 1858, the Finland changed the sides. The trend among nations over the years has been towards driving on the right, but Britain did its best to avoid this global homogenization. And with the expansion of travel and road building in 19th century, traffic rules were made in every country. Left-hand driving was made mandatory in Britain in 1835, and countries which were part of British Empire also followed the same rule. And that is the reason why India, Australasia, and the former British colonies in South Africa go left. Now here, Egypt was an ex exception. And it is because Egypt was conquered by Napoleon before becoming a British colony. Now Japan was never part of the British Empire, but still it goes on the left side. And the origin of this habit goes back to the Edo period when samurai ruled the country. It was until 1972 that this unwritten rule became more or less official and this was the year when Japan's first railway was introduced and this was built with technical assistance from the British. Gradually, a massive network of railways and tram track was built and of course, all trains and trams drop on the left-hand side. But still it took almost half century till the left-hand drive rule was written in a law in 1924. When the Dutch arrived in Indonesia in 1596, they brought along the habit of driving on the left. When the Napoleon conquered the Netherlands, they started driving on the right, but colonies like Indonesia and Suriname continued on the left. Now, in the early years of English colonization of North America, English driving customs were followed and the colonies drove on the left. After gaining independence from England, they were anxious to cast off all remaining links with their British colonial past and gradually changed the sides from left to the right hand. The first law requiring drivers to keep right was passed in Pennsylvania in 1792, in New York in 1804, and in New Jersey in 1813. Now, despite the development in the US, until World War II, the driving in Canada was divided between left and right. Some parts of Canada continued to drive on the left side, while the other part was driving on the left. The territory controlled by the French, that is from Quebec to Lusania, was driving on the right side, and the territory occupied by the English, like British Columbia or uh, Newfoundland, they kept on the left side. The British Columbia and Atlantic provinces switched to right in 1920, and Newfoundland drove on the left until 1947 and joined Canada in 1949. In Europe, the remaining left driving countries switched one by one to driving on the right. Portugal changed in 1920 and the change took place on the same day in the whole country, including the colonies. Territories, however, which bordered other left-hand driving countries were exempted. And that is why Macau, which is now called Goa, a part of India, and Portuguese East Africa kept the old system. In Italy, the practice of driving on the right began in late 1890s, and the first Italian highway code issued on the 30th June 1912 stated that all vehicles had to drive on the right. And officially it was made mandatory to drive on the right in 
June 1912. Until 1930s, Spain lacked national traffic regulations. Some parts of the country draw on the right, like Barcelona, and other parts draw on the left, like Madrid. But on the 1st October 1924, Madrid switched to driving on the right side. The breakup of Austro-Hungarian Empire caused no change. Czechoslovakia, Yugoslavia and Hungary continued to drive on the left. Austria itself was something of a curiosity. Half of the country drive on the left and half on the right. And the dividing line was precisely the area affected by Napoleon's conquest in 1805. When Nazis marched into Austria on 12 March 1938, Hitler ordered all of the Austria to switch to the driving on the right overnight. And Czechoslovakia and Hungary changed to the right after being invaded by Germany in 1939. After the Second World War, left driving Sweden, which was the old one out in mainland Europe, also felt increasing pressure to change sides in order to confirm with the rest of the Europe. And the problem was that all their neighbors already driving on the right side. And there were a lot of small roads without any proper guards leading into Norway and Finland. And therefore, Sweden switched their side in 1967. In 1960, interestingly, Great Britain also considered changing the sides. But, the drop, but it dropped the idea because it could not see any advantage or merit or demerit of driving on either left side or right side. Now today, four European countries, UK, Ireland, Cyprus and Malta still drive on the left side. Korea also drove on the left when it was under Japanese rule, as did Taiwan. And Korea changed to driving on the right side under the influence of US and Soviet. Taiwan changed when it was transferred to China. Now, while many countries changed their side from left to right, the only example recorded for a change from right to left is Okinawa. It changed from right to left in 1978. Myanmar, which is Earlier was Burma, it was a British colony until 1948 and driving on the left until 1970 and then it changed the site to right. Now many countries change their site from left to right just to get rid of all memories of their past colonization. Otherwise there is no merit particular merit or demerit of driving either on the left side or on the right side. It is only a cultural behavior. Almost always in countries where one drives on the right hand side of the road, the cars are built so that the driver sit on the left side of the car. All early automobiles in the USA were right hand drive following the practice established by horse-drawn buggies. And they changed to the left-hand drive in early 20th century. Because it was thought that it is more practical to have the driver seated near the center line of the road, both to judge the space available when passing oncoming car and to allow front seat passengers to get out of the car onto the pavement instead of into the middle of the street. And Ford changed the left-hand drive in its 1908-year model. And a Ford catalog from 1908 explains the benefit of placing the controls on the left side of the car. Traveling along the right side of the road with the steering wheel on the right side of the car made it necessary to get out of on the street side and walk around the car. 
This is awkward and inconvenient if there is a lady to be considered. Control on the left allows you to step out of the car onto the curb. In the matter of steering with control on the right, the driver is farthest away from the vehicle he is passing, going to opposite direction. With it on the left side, he is able to see even the wheels of the other car and easily avoid danger. Now, this was the reason. If you read it again, you will understand why this change was made. Whatever be the position of the steering wheel in a car, one comfort is that arrangement of pedals. And that is always in the order of A, B, C. On the right side, it is accelerator and then brake and then the clutch. And this is the international practice now. Going from right to left, the order is always A, B, C. Whether the driver sits on the left side of the, road, left side of the car or right side of the car. But A, B, C does not change. One area which is not standardized yet is the location of the turning signal lever. In some cases, in some car, you will find that this is on the right side of the driver, where, whereas in some cars, it is on the right hand of the driver. So friends, thank you very much for watching this video. I hope you liked it.